Hey, Josh Powers here with Quixel, and if you're new to Quixel Mixer, then this tutorial is for you. Today I'll go over the basics of how to blend a few of the Megascan surfaces together to create a brand new surface just by using height data. So let's get started. Okay, with the new mix window open, I'm going to name this uh, mix Mossy Rock. And I can set my working resolution to whatever I want, um, up to 8K. Um, I'm usually pretty happy with 2K as it's a pretty good balance of um, detail with performance. So I'm going to keep it 2048. And then uh, PBR workflow, I'm going to keep it specular, but I can use metalness, which is a pretty common uh, workflow for most game engines. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it at specular. And then I'm going to hit OK. So if we go up here under the Layers tab, um, we can click on the Add Surface Layer. I'm going to click that. And then uh, for this mix, I'm using just three Megascan surfaces, and all three of them are free to download. So that way you can easily follow along with me. Um, and I'm going to start off with the Icelandic Rock Cliff. OK, so now that that's loaded, um, you can see that our mix is, uh, is on there. The Megascan mix is on there. Um, and so you notice that we have a few of the uh, few properties over here that we can adjust. Um, first, we have height intensity, and then um, that's just going to let us control, obviously, as it sounds, uh, the, the intensity of the height. And so the low frequency is going to really pump out those um, those larger, broader shapes. And then the uh, high frequency is going to be a little bit more on the detailed side. So if you zoom in a little bit, you can see that how that really affects the smaller, finer details of the scan. So um, down below that is reflectance. So that lets us change the diffuse. Uh, we can you can adjust the color to, to be whatever you want. Um, we can adjust the specular, the gloss, and you know make that really shiny. Uh, and then if we were to be using the metalness um, workflow, the specular would be replaced with metalness. And one of the things you can actually do is if you go up to the settings tab, you can change this workflow to metalness in the middle of a mix, and it will reload all of the uh, mega scan surfaces uh, to have the appropriate um, uh, textures. So um, this is a really handy feature if you decide to switch uh, game engines or, or how you want to render this, uh, the workflow you're using. Uh, or if you make something for one project and then you want to use it again on another project, you can change uh, the workflow at any point. Um, so then we have the uh, placement. Um, that's just basically letting us change the uh, position of the uh, scan. Uh, so that, that can be helpful at times as well. And then we have uh, tile. And so we have our repetitions. We can uh, adjust those. Um, and then uh, we can also do rotate. Um, and right now, because I am uh, set to have the tile X and Y on, uh, the rotation is locked to uh, 90 degree increments, and that's just to ensure that the tile is going to um, not be broken. But if for whatever reason I decided that I wanted to get rid of that, uh, say I wanted to have a, um, a surface that I didn't, I didn't plan on having going towards the edges, it was going to be something that I was going to blend in more in the middle, um, I can disable that, and then that lets me scale this up um, uh, or down however I want. And then the rotations are also uh, no longer locked to 90 degree increments. So uh, that can be helpful. On, and I have used that from time to time. Uh, so having that feature available to you is, is very nice. Uh, but in general, I usually leave this on so that I'm not going to get any edge seams. Uh, so in this case, on this layer, I'm just going to um, adjust the height intensity. So I'm going to bump the high frequency up to about 2 and then the low frequency to about two as well. So that way I got some nice, uh, you know, really nice looking height information on this rock here. Okay, next we're gonna add some moss to this. So I'm gonna go back to the add surface layer and I'm gonna click on this Nordic moss. Okay, so you'll notice that I have some new settings over here um, that weren't down here. So we just have the height intensity here up here. We have blend settings and that's because um, this is a layer that I can actually blend, whereas this is my base layer. So I have nothing to actually blend underneath this, um, but this I can actually blend to the rock. And so that's why I have these options up here. Uh, and so essentially uh, this is how this layer is going to blend in to the layers below it. And so I can blend from below, which is currently is, or I can blend from above. And you'll see that, um, it, that it's affecting more of the, the surfaces uh, and points that are higher up. Whereas if I blend from below, it's it's coming from below. Uh, threshold is basically how much coverage that's going to have. Think of it in 3D as if you're pushing the plane up, um, or if I were coming from above, I'd be pushing it down. So um, it's kind of like how much you're pushing that that layer into uh, the, the other mixes. So I'm going to keep it from below. 
Um, and then radius is essentially going to be um, the fall off of the blend. Uh, and so that can, uh, that can be really, really large or it can be really sharp. So, and then um, if I go down to preserve details, uh, this is going to essentially be the crispness and the sharpness of how the edges of, of the height uh, information blend. So if you got max out, it's going to be pretty sharp. And then um, if I lower that down, uh, you're going to start to get really, really soft blends. And this is going to look pretty, pretty old. Uh, you know, that's that's the kind of uh, blends that you would expect on, on older consoles and things like that. So um, that's not too great looking um, in this case, but there are times where this might be what you want, especially if you have uh, grime or uh, just general grunge and things like that. You may want that softer fall off. Um, but in a situation like this with the moss and vegetation, I'm going to want something that's going to be a little bit harder. So you would bump that up. Uh, so opacity is uh, just as it sounds. It's just going to how much that layer is going to show through and that's going to affect everything on the layer. Um, next, we have wrap to base and wrap to base is essentially uh, whether or not the layer is going to conform to the underlying height map. So um, as I pump this up, it's going to actually conform to the height map and you're going to see the rock details coming through a lot more pronounced. Um, if I have it set to zero, then uh, essentially what it's doing is it's taking the height data from this moss layer and it's using that exclusively. Um, so if you hit, uh, you can go up to here actually and, and click on this and you can go to the displacement tab and you can see that you're, you're kind of getting that chunkiness here and that's the moss. And as I wrap to base, you can see that it's, it's going to start bleeding through uh, with the rock. And so that's, um, that's what that is, uh, is for. And it's, it's extremely helpful to um, help sell thickness and depth, especially with a situation like vegetation or, or grass, moss, things like that. It's going to help with um, making it not look too much like just like a, a diffuse texture swap, and it's gonna it's gonna make it feel like it's um, it's got thickness and volume to it, and it's overgrowing on the rock to the point that it's actually uh, kind of removing some of this detail. So then remove base details. Um, that's essentially going to um, kind of blur out the um, or it's going to remove the higher frequency um, normal detail and it's going to leave more of the uh, low frequency detail so if i crank this up you're going to see that a lot of that detail that was there is now gone and uh, this again can can play really nicely with wrap to base in order to make things look like it's a lot thicker and has more depth to it um, and then if i remove that down to zero you'll see that every tiny little a nook and cranny of that um, underlying height map data is there. So um, it's just all about balance and, and what you're going for. So in this case, um, I'm going to put the base detail down to six. So I want most of that detail gone, but not all of it. And then wrap to base, I'm going to do about, uh, about halfway or so. Uh, and this is just going to be a nice blend um, between uh, capturing some of the data of the rock um, but not, not too much of it. Because if I, if I went down to, um, to zero, you would see that I kind of lose most of that rock data and it just, you know, just doesn't really sell it that well. But if I crank it up to one, um, and then it's just a little, uh, a little too much. So, um, in this case, uh, I'm going to find that about 0.5 is, is going to work pretty well. Uh, preserve detail. I'm just going to pull back down to, I'm just going to set it to 7.5. Oops. 7.5. And that is the uh, the default for that. And then uh, radius, I'm going to set to about halfway as well. That way we have a nice, uh, decent fall off there. And the threshold, I'm just going to bump up to about uh, 0.99 is fine, 0 0.099. Um, so now we have a pretty good, uh, pretty good base already, and we've already really transformed um, that rock texture into feeling like something completely different. Um, so I'm pretty good with this except now I, I do want to add some decals and so I can click on this add decal atlas layer here and I'm going to add the fallen branches okay so decal layers um, they they do have slightly different base uh, standard settings um, the, the settings are the same but they're the defaults are set a little bit differently wrap to base is automatically set to one remove base details set to seven that's because typically when you add a decal you're going to want the decals, uh, height data, and all that stuff to be on top. Um, you're not going to want that to kind of blend in so much with the, um, the underlying height data. Now, if you decided that you wanted to do that, you can adjust that. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's completely up to you. 
Uh, usually the only settings I mess with for decals is I change the opacity mask to um, be from above or below, depending on what I'm looking for. That way I have a little bit more control over the, um, uh, the layer and how it blends. Um, in this case, I'm going to do from above and then just maybe bump up the threshold just a tad bit. And then, um, and then down in repetitions, I'm going to just change this to three. So uh, things are looking pretty good, but I do want to get rid of uh, how much the sticks are blending onto the rocks. Uh, I want it to feel like maybe the sticks have fallen from above and, and got tangled up in the moss itself. And, um, and on the rocks, it just kind of skidded off and, and kept falling. So I don't want them to, to show up so much on the rocks. So a really easy way to, to um, fix that is I can layer link the decal layer with the moss. And uh, if I just hold down Alt and then left click on the layer, it's going to um, it's going to basically only reveal the branches in the mossy areas, uh, which really helps kind of get rid of the uh, how much it was showing on the, the rock. So if I un unlink that, you'll see that I have a bunch on the rocks. If I link it, um, it starts to go away. And the nice thing with you know with uh, how we have the fall off set set up for the moss and and how those all work together, these branches will kind of um, bleed out onto the rock. So you're not getting just like this abrupt cutoff and like it can't go on the rock. Um, it, it will go on there, but by and large, it's going to stay away from areas uh, of the rock that don't have the moss next to it. And that just helps really sell the uh, natural believability of the material. So um, yeah, there you go. I mean, in a nutshell, that's that's the material here. We just did with uh, three quick mega scan surfaces. Again, these are free, so if you want to give this a shot, um, you can feel free to download those from the mega scans library. And um, and now all that's left to do is go to export. And with export, we can just change the uh, surface name. We can export it uh, to a specific folder, and then we can we can adjust the export resolution. Um, so if you wanted to have something a little bit higher res. Uh, for your final product, you can switch it to uh, 4K and then hit export, um, and it will um, it will upsize all of those uh, mega scans um, before it actually does the export. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it at 2K. And then uh, export format is just uh, what what uh, uh, image type that you want to use. Um, and then uh, the maps themselves, you can adjust things um, specifically for your project to channel pack certain things. So in this case, maybe I want uh, specular um, to be in red and then uh, green I wanted want gloss and then blue I'd want ambient occlusion um, you, know, you can set this up to however your project uh, needs it and then all you have to do is hit export and there you have it and literally just a few minutes of work we were able to combine three different mega scans to create a believable looking moss covered rock material this was just a small example of the power and flexibility mixer has to offer so stay tuned for more tutorials. Also, there's a thread in Quixel's brand new forum where you can post your own results of this surface, where I, along with other artists from Quixel, will be more than happy to offer feedback and answer any questions you might have. Thanks for watching.